Oki, ni tu koeks, ki ni takeks, ni stu a kok makuina skiaki, no stu toh gana. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Esther Tailfeathers, and it's good to um, say hello to you on Good, good Friday. So, I just have some information um, that I've been asked to share with you, and hopefully, it comes across clear. The modeling and the numbers that we were talking about and that Martin had released earlier this morning or earlier today. So, first of all, the um, none of the numbers are exact uh, and the predictions are not exact either because they're based on a bunch of factors. But we're going to try to simplify it so that we can all try to see how this is going to um, evolve and what we need to do. So. First, we've got, I've got the numbers here that um, Martin had given you earlier today, and that is that we have approximately 7,500 people on reserve. Pam, can you see that? Okay, we have approximately 7,500 people on reserve. If 25 or 22% of those people get ill, that means that 1,600 people on our reserve will have the infection. So the infection goes from mild to like cold-like symptoms, uh, mild fever uh, and cough to very severe. So somewhere within that um, 1600, the number of cases will fall between being mild to very severe to being very, um, very difficult. So there, uh, uh, the projection is about 6.6% of our um, of our people will be hospitalized. That means we're looking at a number of 109 of our people be, will be hospitalized. 2.3% of our people will end up in ICU. So we're looking at a number of 38. And then we're looking at a number of uh, 31 if we're looking at mortality. And we're hoping we don't, we don't get anywhere near that. And that's why we're doing all the work that we're doing. Okay, so on this, this chart here, is a model that everybody is seeing on the um, on TV in the States, in Canada, in Alberta. So on this axis here, it's the number of cases versus the number of days. So we don't start seeing these graphs until we have our very first case. So um, this number, I mean, this line across here is our hospital capacity, and that shows um, what we have in terms of our capacity in uh, in this area. So this would be South Zone capacity. That would be Lethbridge Regional Hospital, Cardston Hospital, Pincher Creek Hospital, um, and then the ones in East Southern Alberta. Uh, this line here, of course, is the number of days. And you'll, if you are watching uh, what's happening with the Navajo Nation, they um, they actually have quite a, what they call a surge. This is the surge right here. That's when the numbers start going up and they go up really fast. So Navajo Nation um, being uh, as they are, were hit really bad and now they're hitting a surge. They're up to, I think approximately 400 um, infections and they've already had 22 deaths on their, in, on their reservation. Mind you, they have um, about 150,000 people. So much larger than us. Uh, so this would be the situation in, um, in an area like New York City or um, the people that are not well prepared for, uh, for the COVID crisis. And this would be a community that is prepared where the, where the slope or the surge is much slower and it doesn't override the capacity of the hospital. So um, so what we want to do is we want to stay within that so that we do not uh, we don't we do not have the situation where we have no hospital beds and no hospital care. So what's happening with Blood Tribe is we haven't seen our first case yet, but once we see our first case, we're hoping that what we're going to see is we're going to see a slow surge. Uh, we'll try to stay within the capacity of uh, what we have here. And then we'll start seeing the infections going down, 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 till we get to zero. So the hopeful, the what we're hoping for is a very slow curve, and um, and no deaths. If we can avoid death, we'd be really, we'll be doing really well. 
So what we're doing, all of the uh, preparation work, all of the work that our people have do been doing, including staying home, is going to help us not to lose our people and not to have to be in hospital. So we all got to work really hard on that, but that's basically expa explaining what happens with this and in Easter colors. So um, I wish I had the capacity to answer questions, but um, and maybe we will in the in the future. Uh, the other thing that I was asked to explain was our flowchart for our shelters, and I just want to um, I just want to say that um, what we what we're experiencing is the um, is that the COVID virus is outside of the reserve. We have had no positives yet. And we are lucky to be within South Zone, so our southern border is cut off, and we don't have um, the snowbirds coming up from the south and bringing anything into into the South Zone region. And so it ends in Clara's home, and so from Clara's home south, uh, we're seeing very few infections. So the Blood Reserve and Bigani are within the South Zone, and so we have a buffer. We are um, we are protected by what's happening in South Zone and all of us are together in this so uh, whatever happens outside of our reserve also affects the inside of our reserve. So the thing that we are working on right now is containing whatever comes into the reserve and it is going to come because no place in the world has been able to completely uh, isolate themselves from the COVID virus so we know it's coming. So our community, um, the emergency um, response group, which consists of our, our, all of our directors and all of us uh, collaborating and trying to get a plan for our tribe. Um, we've come up with a plan and we actually have executed some of it. So we're, we've got some things going here, but I'm gonna show you the plan and try to explain to you sheltering and how we want to do the sheltering. So I'm gonna just put this camera here. We have a better picture than what I've drawn. So here's the sh shelter flow. The first thing that we're trying to do is home isolation. So everybody has been asked to stay home and isolate. And if you have the ability, like if you have your own home and you have um, you know, a fairly uh, safe place to be, then you stay home and you follow the protocol, which most of us have been doing. But we have those um, individuals who do not have that, um, that, that ability to stay in their home. Either it's crowded, either they're, they're, they have no home and they're coming from outside, um, or somebody who's vulnerable and cannot stay in a crowded housing situation. So if they can't, no. They, then they go down to the non-symptomatic, non-vulnerable. That means that they're not having the COVID symptoms and they're not vulnerable. If they fall into those categories, then they go to the shelter. And uh, our team is currently trying to um, establish uh, these shelters for those who are non-symptomatic, non-vulnerable, and are not sick. So we're looking at uh, setting up a shelter in um, standoff, which would probably be the White Calf Hall. And they're looking at uh, Moses Lake Shelter, which is already up and running and, um, and we have people in there. Uh, and then they're looking at Gladstone Hall. So if they're in that shelter, great, we need to keep them safe there. The second, if they can't, if, they're, if they are symptomatic or they are vulnerable, so we go no, so they go into the vulnerable um, shelter, which would be the elders and the people with chronic disease. If they are vulnerable, yes, then they go to Kainai Healing Lodge, which is a social housing situation to help uh, protect the vulnerable people in our community. And so if they go there, they will be provided with uh, um, room and, um, and food and uh, periodic uh, medical uh, attention so we will have nurses coming in to check on the people at Kainai Healing Lodge. Okay so if they're not vulnerable, no. The next thing is those that are symptomatic or have a po positive COVID test and cannot uh, isolate within a home. So we have established the Flamingo Motel for quarantine. 
So we have uh, a place for our people to go who are symptomatic, who may have a positive COVID, and we have staff who are manning the Flamingo Hotel and supporting the people that need to be in there. The fifth one is repatriation, and that's bringing our people home um, from elsewhere, wh whether they be in Calgary or Edmonton. We would like to make it very safe for them. So if they come back, they're repatriated. We would like to get them tested first, and the tests now are taking 48 hours. So if they're negative, then, um, uh, then they can follow the whole shelter flow to where they would um, where they would fit um, and we're hoping that we can we can use a repatriation uh, on our flow sheet so that um, so that we can prevent those people who are coming back home from outside the community so we can prevent them from bringing anything in we want to make sure that they can come home but we also want to test them and make sure that they're not bringing covid into another household so those that's the uh, sheltering um, information and and how the team is working on sheltering so we're really hopeful that um, that we can um, work this so we protect our population within our our boundaries and so we have to play like a hockey team where you isolate or you play tough defense and we don't let the covid into our community but once the COVID gets into our community, we have to get tighter and we have to isolate those cases in the community to prevent community spread. If we can prevent community spread and we're very good at it, then we'll be looking at a very good um, model and hopefully um, very few sick people. Um, it would be naive for us to say that we won't get any sickness. We will get sickness and we have to be ready for it. Um, and we are working as well on a field hospital, which will probably probably be announced uh, later on. But we are looking at building our own capacity uh, for this time period because it looks like we'll have at least 100 people that may need hospitalization. So that's all it in a nutshell, everybody. And uh, I hope that um, that was clear. I'm not a teacher. I wish I was. Okay. Okay, bye.